I've got beer mail. No, this is mock beer mail. It's a fake beer mail. This is the second video, the results video of the iType New England IPA oxidized bottling experiment where I bottle the same beer four different ways. And I also will have a control beer from the keg. And I have a real problem with this video because if this is going to be a good video, it's going to mean that some of these beers are going to be really bad. So I will be drinking some bad beer here today. If any of these beers haven't gone bad, this means that these videos are going to suck. Yeah. Why do I do this thing? So you don't have to. Let's just kick it. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. So this was a very asked after video when I recommended this and asked, are you interested in this? So I bottled, if you haven't watched the first video, you can go back and watch that video and then come back to this one. You can see how I bottled this in four different ways with the, with the eye tap, but I'm gonna also quickly explain it while we try this out. I bought this cheap little glasses because uh, I didn't have five glasses of the same type. So plastic glasses, but it will have to do for now. In this box, I have four bottles. We're gonna open. Fuck. <laughs> Better do this gentle. So in this box, I have four bottles. I'm gonna open it up, but I have given this the full postman treatment. Postman treatment. <laughs> So I handled this package very roughly. I also threw it in the car and drove it in the car for two days from home to work and to shops and ordinary things like that. Then it has been lying at room temperature for a couple of days. And uh, now it's been sitting out in the, the cold for like 18 hours. I can tilt the camera when we do like color test. So we're gonna try this by color, by taste and by smell see how much they differ these should be at the same temperature but the one i have in the keg is a little bit colder let's open this up i did also if you haven't watched the other one vacuum sealed each bottle individually that is what i called in that video the the bitch insurance what i mean by the bitch insurance that i will use plastic pet bottles that's what I use for shipping because what I went with the postman treatment is that I don't want the beer bottles to break so I vacuum sealed each and every one of these individually so no one will like bitch about the, the beer bottles so we could see if we have any escaping of the CO2 or no not in bottle number one bottle number two no, it has not escaped any CO2. It has not been contacted with the outside world. Number three, the same here. And I mentioned this in the part one video. I've done this also when I sent beer. Number four is intact. I don't recommend vacuum sealing it, but I've done this when I shipped some bottles abroad to UK by air mail to see if anything would escape. Because if CO2 would have escaped from the bottle, it would have started inflating this bag, but it did not. And it did not for these, those two bottles who arrived to the UK either. These bottles have been a week in the package. And the reason I wanted to do a week instead of doing like two weeks is what if in two weeks all of this has gone bad? Because New England IPAs are very sensitive and I have had a lot of New England IPAs sent to me and even which I bought from the store that has been oxidized. And I have been talking about oxidization problems and ways to deal with it in the past. But when I did the uh, ITAP videos, there were enormous interest from you guys to see if beer will be oxidized. So four different ways. 
The first one is some sort of a control. Am I screaming? Some sort of a control. Here I did not flush the bottles at all because I've seen people doing this. This is number one. I just pressurized it, but that does not mean that any oxygen will escape. For number two, I flushed it once with the ITAP. So pressurized it, released, and then pressurized it again and woo, filled her up. And all of these were capped on foam and they are feeling tight. Number three, I flashed, flashed, flash! Ah! Flash! Ah! Of the Number three, I flushed twice with the eye tap, then I pressurized it and filled it up. Capped on foam. We have the same amount of beer in each one of them. Number four, I used which I talked about in uh, the ITAP video. I want to link uh, down below to the ITAPs video and also uh, how to build that tower. When I play with the ITAP, I, I talked about, I'm thinking this is the best method. This is a soda stream knockoff, which I bought in a Swedish store called Rusta for like 30 bucks and stuck a hose on it. And it has been a friend of mine. So I flushed it with the uh, soda stream machine and then I flushed it again with the I tap and then pressurized and bottled. So I'm wasting a lot of beer here today and I'm wasting of course a lot of my time and yeah sorry your time so if you guys would leave a like what if if none of these beers are bad after rough handling after a week I have an idea about that also but we will wait and see I'll talk about that in the end. I have an extra glass here for the control beer. The control beer is a little bit colder than, than this one, but it doesn't really matter because it's the bottling, I think. And I have a, a lightsaber here so we can, like, please have battery so we can shine. Welcome, thank you, yes. So we can shine through the, uh, the glasses. I'm a little bit worried that this video will suck. If you want to see, maybe we should talk about that in the end. If you want me to do this again with like a longer period, maybe have more bottles and like doing some cold, some hot, tell me what you want to see of this. And if this video hits 500 likes, I will do a extensive experiment about this. So drop a like, but of course maybe you shouldn't subscribe to my channel because my channel sucks because I try to make bad beer just so you don't have to. Okay this is number one so this has not been uh, flushed at all. does not look like bad man are we getting a shitty video but we will see if we have any change in colors we will see if we have any change in smell in in taste it's still carbonated this beer never had a, a good head and uh, everyone loves a good head i'm gonna link down below to my everyone loves good head t-shirt you can go and check that out this is number two which was flashed once. So far so so good. I will tilt down the camera when we do the, uh, the light test. So I know that you're not seeing the, the bottles. This is number three. This was flushed twice with the eye tap. And when I say flushed I mean flushed and released. So I pressurized it three times. Remember, the first time you pressurize the eye tap, you have gotten rid of no air, so no oxygen. Okay. Maybe they are all bad, but we do have the control. We do have the control. And all of these bottles are marked one, two, three, four with Roman letters. 
so I couldn't screw this up. And I marked them straight away when filling. So this is number four, which was flushed with the, so what if this was, should be the worst one, flushed with the soda stream and then flushed with the eye tap and then pressurized and filled. I don't like these plastic glasses. Okay, I need to also get the control beer from the kegerator. That's not the one. That's the one. Okay, that's the ooh, control beer. So, I can't see any difference here to be to be fair. Let me try to move them even closer together. So hopefully, I don't have a camera monitor right now. Hopefully, I'm in mean the shot. Hopefully you can see the color of the beer. It is extremely hazy. I can't see a difference at all from any of them. Remember, this is the control from the keg and this, in my opinion, should be the worst one. Let's uh, go for smell and taste. So the one from the keg and no, there's no difference in color. I do have an idea if they all were gonna pass. I do, I do have an idea and I will talk about that in the end, but first, Let's see if we can, should I like smell them against, how should we do this properly? This is of course colder. Is this good content? This was one week. If you have any ideas on how to make this properly, if you want more investigation videos, comment down below and if we hit 500 likes in this video, I will do a full table of beers. Ooh, then you might have need to get a guest in here. Okay, I will taste the uh, control beer from the K. I will link to the uh, grain to glass of this new Linda IPA down below. Still nice, fresh and hoppy. Let's try the one I think should be the worst. It is warmer, <clears throat> so maybe try it with uh, the one I think should be the best. No flushing. Against flushed once with the soda stream, flushed once with the eye tap, repressured and then bottled. No, there's no difference. This video sucks. There's no difference. This beer has not oxidized being in the bottle for a week. Me tossing it around, me driving around in the car, have it sitting warm in the house. I kicked it around. Let's look at this beer from the start. You can have a look at the grain to glass video. So. It has not gone bad in a full week. I'm a bit disappointed, of course, that my video sucks, but, but does it? I'm just sharing the result here. Don't come here, watch my videos and try to get a full answer. My channel sucks. I just try to be up forward and honest about everything. So is this a failure? I think not. I would have been, it would have been awesome if we could say that, okay, this beer that we didn't flush at all is oxidized as f and it sucks. But it isn't. I can't tell the difference. I can't tell the difference at all. All I can tell the difference from is this one. It's colder. But otherwise, 
it's the same beers. These, of course, you can't see them, but this, oh, of course, has the same temperature. Why aren't they oxidized? Well, I have been super picky during fermentation, during transfer. This was pressurized under pressure. This was fermented under pressure, which means no air gets in. Even though I'm opening the keg, no, not the keg, uh, the fermenter for dry hopping, as the beers are carbonated, you have a massive off gassing. And I'm also dry hopping before the end of fermentation will drive off any oxygen. By keeping oxygen out of the, the beer as much as possible during fermentation, during dry hopping, I also gonna link to how I prepare my cakes and how I do closed transfers. I fill up my cakes entirely with, with sanitizer, flush everything with CO2. So that means that before the bottling, these beers has been treated anally. Can you say that? I've been mean, anal with not getting oxygen in this. So I think that is a key factor. Also for these hoppy beers, I add some ascorbic acid. Don't know if that was seen in the grain to glass video, but you can add ascorbic acid as soon as possible. I don't think you should add it hot, but add it cold as soon as, as, soon as possible. Did I say as soon as possible? 0.1 grams per liter of wort that I've been doing for hopper beers. You, you won't get any, in my opinion, any taste differences. And uh, ascorbic acid, I wouldn't be afraid of it in that amount. It's actually th the same they put in the uh, vitamin C tablet. So it's basically vitamin C. Of course, if you are overusing it you could like get is it like urine stones something think so but uh, 0.1 grams per liter is not much if you want to help out my channel and you want even more shitty and behind the scenes content i do have patreon or channel membership or you can just buy me a beer or donate all links down below thank you so much for watching let me know how we can do this experiment better and if you want to see a uh, more in depth with you about this, we need 500 likes on this video. Cheers and thanks for watching. Dork the Hans out. Now go and watch this video. Or maybe that one. Cheers. This should be the worst one. What should I do with all the beer?